Hello fellow creatives and event filmmakers. Welcome to another episode of Conversation with Creatives. On today's episode of Conversation with Creatives, I sit down with first time documentary filmmaker, Michaela Wheeler. Michaela's been working on this documentary for almost two years now. And what's really cool about this documentary and her first time at that is that it's based around an event. She comes from the event filmmaking world, everything from weddings, corporate shoots, things of that nature. She's definitely paid her dues, like all of us. But she decided to level up and work on this particular documentary. What's cool about the documentary, like I mentioned, it's based around an event, but the event that it's based around is called Crossing for CF, or Crossing for Cystic Fibrosis. It's an amazing endurance paddleboard competition that takes place in Bemidi, which is in the Bahamas, and they travel across the ocean all the way to Lake Worth, Florida. And that's right near my hometown of West Palm Beach. So it's 80 miles across the ocean, super intense. But what's crazy is that she decided not only to talk about the event, but follow a particular paddler. So I sat down with Michaela at El Cid Barbershop and we talked everything about the process, what it was like from the pre-planning, the production to the post-production. So without further ado, let's head out to El Cid, sit down with Michaela and find out how she did this thing. Hello creatives and welcome back. Uh, we're back here at El Cid Barbershop for another conversation with creatives. Today I'm with Michaela Wheeler. Uh, I've had the personal uh, experience of actually working with Michaela on a documentary based around an event. And as you know, I really focus in on talking about event filmmaking, uh, what that process is like, everything from you know, events like weddings, corporate events, things are based, at, are based around life, life of live events because as you know, with live events, there are no second takes, right? It's just, it is what it is. I think from my wedding experience and from my event experience, it gave me a good launching platform to know, number one, how to have a plan, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, starting small, like starting with smaller events, mm -hmm. starting you know, with less complicated things is going to teach you the principles to then just to apply on a, on a bigger scope, right? Mm -hmm. So I took my, you know, wedding experience and my experience with creating, with participating and shooting events, and I applied the principles of, you know, having a plan, mm -hmm. um, having a plan of the event, right? Mm -hmm. The schedule of the event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also a huge component that I took from my event experience is how to function under pressure and how to have flexibility when things do not go as planned. And that's a skill set of, in and of itself. It is. So I was able to take, you know, those really amazing skill sets that I learned from, you know, event videography and apply them on a larger scale when you have, you know, someone that you're trying to document them doing a really crazy feat in real time and you have no idea how it's going to go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really what it's the hard part, right? Because I think what event filmmaking teaches us, mm -hmm. not only as filmmakers, but in general, mm -hmm. patience. Because mm -hmm. it's so, mm -hmm. a lot of this we're like rush, 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 get it, get mm -hmm. it, get it. And a lot of times we have to sit and wait for it to happen mm -hmm. because if we force it to happen, mm -hmm. now we're introducing ourselves as part of the story. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy for mm -hmm. us to fall into that trap, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure there were times that you've learned that throughout this whole process of mm -hmm. from the event world and then going into this. Yeah. Because you didn't want to be an outside influence on anything as far as that goes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a, it's a fine line when you're making documentaries, you mm -hmm. know? Like, you want to let the action unfold, but sometimes you do have to step in and give, like, a little direction. Mm. I don't know. Like, it's, it's a really it's fine a very, line. That's a very, like, yeah, <laughs> controversial type yeah. way of taking documentaries in, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, that's interesting. Um, so, going into The Crossing now, because you had this experience of doing live events, what was it that said, you know what, I, 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 can do, I can do events and I can do weddings and I can do things of that sort, 
what was it the what was the I guess the uh, thing or that spark that said you know what I want to do longer form storytelling very similar to what I do with weddings although mm -hmm. now you're introducing more of an arc right mm -hmm. it's not so fluff it's not mm -hmm. all weddings fluff 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 mm -hmm. beautiful 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 shots and that in itself is a skill mm -hmm. what what was it that made you want to go into doing start doing other types of events and covering those into documentary whether it be short form or long form I actually I mean I started filmmaking when I was 14 years oh, old wow. actually and I always have loved films like movies I've always loved you know telling story narrative more narrative style projects and so I did I feel like I started making like documentary films when I was 14 I did like wow. a Springs documentary like the Florida Springs yeah I did a documentary on that when I was 12 or when I was 15 and then I did another documentary called Wonder of the Blue back probably five years ago and it was all about exploring why people love the water and the ocean so much. Yeah. So I feel like I kind of already had like the the passion and some of the experience starting on a smaller scale and working mm -hmm. larger, larger, larger. Yeah. So that when I was offered the the crossing to document it, it yeah. was just like a it was like a, a dream come true, you know? Uh -huh. um, and I think, you know, having experience shooting events was just another skill set I could pull from in order to help me kind of yeah. with this bigger project. So you were longing to do a project like that. Yes. It just, it just didn't really present itself until this particular moment in time. Yeah, so I was actually at Surf Expo. Um, I got it through another, like I went because um, another job at the time mm -hmm. got me into Surf Expo mm -hmm. and I just an like randomly met Travis who's the executive director of the Piper's Angels Foundation mm -hmm. and um, the Crossing for Cystic Fibrosis which Piper's Angels, that's who puts on that event. Mm -hmm. And he, we just met and he like started telling me about the crossing and I showed him some of my work mm -hmm. And then, um, and then, like probably a couple days after that, I ended up meeting him in a coffee shop and discussing, um, you know, what their needs might be. They already had like a really strong like digital, like a lot of video that was really like content that was really strong. Right. And so I did a couple smaller like how-to projects for the Piper's Angels Foundation, and then he kind of started telling me, "Hey, I met this guy Scott Johnson." at the Carolina Cup, like probably last year. And, you know, I, I really want to tell his story. He's a, um, you know, the crossing for cystic fibrosis is a race, right? That, mm -hmm. that supports people that have cystic fibrosis, which right. is a double, which is like a genetic lung disease that's terminal. So he had met this guy, Scott Johnson, up uh -huh. in North Carolina uh -huh. and this guy Scott had cystic fibrosis and he ended up going through a double lung transplant at yeah. 29 years of age. He was like literally a few days away from dying. Right. He was bedridden for two months and just this crazy story. And he got the lung transplant. He went on to run Ironmans and just crazy, crazy, yeah, crazy yeah, stuff. Wild. And, you know, Travis had convinced him to do the crossing. <laughs> and it was kind of a, a going to be a full circle story, right? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So Travis was telling me how passionate he was about this story and how he really wanted it to be like a, a short film documentary. And, okay, and, and based all, around Scott's. Based around Scott's story. Experience with the crossing, right? Well, he wanted to tell his backstory too. Okay, got you it. You know, he and and that was one of the challenges of the of this documentary was uh -huh. telling his backstory. He. Our goal was to really tell Scott's life story through the lens of the crossing, through his journey with the crossing. So right. it was kind of like a, his journey with the crossing was symbolic of his larger life journey. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, Travis, Travis was like, would this be something that you'd be interested in maybe? taking on and I was like <laughs> I, I was like uh, <laughs> I was not I mean I was like this is 
this is incredible. Like, oh my it's gosh, far from this weddings. is so yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. But I was really nervous, yeah. you know, like to be offered the chance to direct something, you yeah. know? And, um, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know what that was going to look like in terms of directing a team and mm -hmm. like doing all this stuff I'd never done before, you yeah. know? So yeah. that's kind of how it started. That's really cool. And that's awesome that he was able to see you and saw some of the little work, the little pieces that you've done for him for, for the foundation mm -hmm. and then kind of then throwing this on your lap. So after that coffee shop conversation with Travis, you said yes, obviously, right? So it was it was a little bit of a process. It really? was not just a like and the coffee, the coffee shop actually was just him was before I did any work. It was just us like Okay, just introduce face to face. So I of. did some work for them and right. then he saw some of my other work yeah. and then that's when he offered me the okay, chance. Okay, got it. And that's when it was a, it was a process of right. discussing it, you know, right, and right. like I would say over Well, we were going to do it in 2020, right? Of course, yeah, 2020, the year 2020, yep. And the event ended up getting canceled completely. I know. Yeah. So I had like a whole year to kind of think about it, grow into it, process it. Yeah. And then I would say January of 2021 is when we hit the ground running. Right. Like, so like you got a this. whole year of really kind of planning and that kind of probably helped you a lot as far as organization and getting, getting prepared, getting to know Scott more, getting to know his story yeah. more, kind of refining that a little bit, right? Yeah, I feel like we didn't use that. We kind of shelved the project a little bit in 2020, but I had a chance to really warm up to the idea of it, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and feel more confident. Mm -hmm. And then I would say towards the end of 2020 is when we really were like, we're going to do this. So what were, why were you, what were, what were some of your, your personal, thinking back to then a few years ago before you committed and said yes, what were, what were some of those um, thoughts of like doubt? What were, mm -hmm. what were they? Because obviously you want to do a project like mm -hmm. this. What were those things that entered your mind or affected you as far as that goes? I mean, there's so many, like even just being in a different country, obviously, right? And mm -hmm. doing this huge adventure challenge. Like when I watched the videos, the previous videos of what this was, I was like, this looks so cool. But it's also slightly terrifying. Like I love adventure stuff, but like even the thought of just going to the Bahamas and shooting something, this, you know, on such a scale was really intimidating. And, and also for me, like, I mean, I had never, I didn't know how big it was going to be, like whether I was going to have like a team under me, like what was, was I going to have to manage a Would this budget? be your first time working with a team? Have you been solo up until this point? I would say mostly solo, mostly solo, solopreneur. Right. Right. Like um, sometimes I've, ha I've worked with other people, but I would say vast majority of my experience. Do you feel, solo. do you feel like because you do things so solo, do you feel, do you, how do you feel comfortable that way? Or do you feel, but prior to this situation, what is it bringing other people on? How, why, why was that a, some sort of kind of like, like situation for you? Situation. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm yeah. trying to find the right word. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what, the, forgive me for yeah. lack of words here. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out what is it's it? It's just scary when you have to lead people. It's a totally different like skill set, you know, because yeah. You have to find the right people. You have to, it's communication. It's just, it's a very different skill set than like having this creative idea in your head and, and knowing how you're going to execute it. It's, it's leadership, you know? Leadership and confidence knowing that you did, you put the right person in charge of the job. Yeah, and you know what you want, right? right. To tell them what yeah. they need, you know? I, what I mean? find even when I think back to myself when I first started doing events and anything, I had, and I'm not saying this is the case for you, but I believe looking back now that I'm years back, I feel like I had such an ego mm. because I felt like, I felt like I, there's no one else that can do it better than mm. me. You know what I mean? In my mm. mind. And it's, you look at the credits at any, anything, not one person does it by themselves. Yeah. We're just so used to trained 
And since you started at such a young age of mm -hmm. editing your own things, shooting your mm -hmm. own things, you know, it's like, I got this, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, but as soon as you start putting and delegating things to mm -hmm. other people, and something happens to us as young, like, because we're so used to doing it ourselves. Yeah. We feel like we're giving up part of the project. Therefore, we're giving, we're, yeah. we're, it's, we're no longer in control of it. Yeah. And I think it's a control issue. I don't know yeah. if that's the case for you, and I'm trying to speak no, on your behalf. No, I agree, yeah. And it's so, it, I'm going to be honest with you, after getting past that hump of letting go, mm -hmm. you, you, you start, you can relax. Mm -hmm. And you can be focused on, hyper focused on the things that really matter. Mm -hmm. Because we're so, as filmmakers, especially ones that wear all the hats, mm -hmm. we get so easily bombarded and distracted by so many things mm -hmm. that we're missing the bigger picture. Yeah. Especially as a director. Yeah. Because a director's got to see everything, right? Yeah. But how can you see everything if you're, you're worried about, oh, I need to do the drone and I need to yeah. do the slider and I need to do the interviews and I need to do this and I need to do that. Yeah. It's tough. It's yeah. really tough, especially when you're working on a bigger scale of a documentary, yeah. you know? No, I, t I totally agree. And that's been one of, I think, the beautiful things that I've learned through this documentary. And yeah. it's given me the opportunity to grow in that way. Because I think I was really scared of like, how, and I think it goes back to what you said of putting the right people in the right place. And when you do that, it's actually so relieving because you're like, they've got this. I don't have to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it feels great. It does. It feels so good knowing that that um, that's awesome. What is actually? I know we talked about what CF is and what mm -hmm. and kind of what the crossing is, but really, what is it? Is it is it is it? It said it's a race, but what is it? Is it a race? Like, tell me a little bit yeah. just about the crossing itself for me, yeah. for people that me and myself and other people that don't know. Yeah. So the crossing for cystic fibrosis is a local event here. Uh, it's based out of West Palm, but mm -hmm. it's a 80 mile endurance paddleboard race yeah. from Bimini mm -hmm. and the, Bimini is like a little island, a Bahamian island from the Bahamas. But it's right out in the middle of the Gulf Stream. Mm -hmm. And so everyone goes over there mm -hmm. and, you know, it's like a, it's probably a three, four, five day event, people can come over, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and there's a couple days worth of programming. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a paddle out ceremony to kind of honor, you know, the people that have died of cystic fibrosis. And then it's a race back to the mainland and that's 80 miles. So basically people start at 12 midnight off the beach of Bimini yeah. and they paddle for you know, 15, 16, 17, 18 hours. That's crazy, huh? Um, through the night, yeah, you know, you night. experienced I it. I did, I did. And but I experienced it on the boat, not on the paddle. <laughs> yeah. It's a different situation yeah. on the paddle. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's yeah. thrilling. Yeah. yeah, and they finish, so they finish in Lake Worth Beach. So you started filming the documentary in 2021 because 2020 was a wash. Mm -hmm. So tell me what 2021 was like. How did that all go for you? So we started the documentary in 2021 with pre-production and that just looked like, you know, coming up with a, a log line and a synopsis of how we thought, you know, the story was going to go. And you know, it was really important to Travis that we go up and get Scott's backstory. And Scott doesn't live here in West Palm. He actually lives in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. Okay. So it was really important to him in preparation for Scott doing the crossing, which mm -hmm. is in June, mm -hmm. that we go up and kind of get his backstory. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that looked like us scheduling a shoot up in, in North Carolina. So in April of 2021, we went up for about four days mm -hmm. and shot basically a three to four hour interview of Scott telling his life story. Yeah. You know, it was really intense. Yeah. And then we shot a lot of B-roll of Scott just in his hometown, you know, a lot of paddle boarding. There's these beautiful marshes that mm -hmm. are like clear water like intercoastal marshes mm -hmm. that come right off the ocean. We shot some beautiful content of him paddleboarding in that, him mm -hmm. in the ocean, 
you know, him living everyday life with mm -hmm. his wife Leanne and his friends and just a wide range of B-roll to be able to pull from, you know, that was more in line with the documentary type mm -hmm. feel and style. So you, for, for pre-production, before you even went to the Bahamas in 2021, you went up to, uh, was it Virginia? North Carolina. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. You went up to North Carolina, did some interviews, did some mm -hmm. uh, like initial type of stuff you had control of, right? Because yeah. you were doing interviews there, yeah. laying the groundwork, trying to stick to that guideline of what things you want to need for a shot list. Yeah. And then uh, June, that was early in 2021, right? So April. April. Mm -hmm. So I guess the crossing was coming up a couple months later. So tell me about your trip over to the uh, to Bahamas in 2021. Yeah, so I did a scouting trip actually, which is another part of, I think, your due diligence for, because I had never been over to Bimini, Bimini. I'd never experienced the crossing. So Travis and the team thought it would be good for me to go over there and do a scouting trip in yeah. May, which was really good. I'm so glad that I did that for such a vast event is to kind of just have visuals of like, this is where this is going to be and land. everything. And yeah. we ended up um, going out diving with sharks while we were there. Um, the thing about B Bohemian culture is it's very just like friendly and very spontaneous. So we ended up meeting these people going out and diving with the reef sharks. The local guy showed us a spot. And that ended up being, I was like, I don't know how or why this needs to be in the film, but we need to get Sh Scott diving with sharks. <laughs> I'm and sure he was thrilled with that idea. <laughs> he was. He loved sharks. <laughs> okay. Got it. So <laughs> I, I say all that to say that, 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 as part of pre-production, you know, doing a scouting trip was really important. And we did that in May, about a month before the crossing. Mm -hmm. So the crossing came and Scott was going to be participating in the race on a relay team. So four other people, or three other people, his wife and two friends. Well, no, his wife, his friend, and Travis. Okay. And so we shot... We got there probably four days in advance mm -hmm. and just got like his whole journey, you know, mm -hmm. going over on the, the ride over. We got, um, you know, B-roll of him diving with the sharks mm -hmm. and snorkeling and him at the, you know, events during the evening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just a wide range of content. Mm -hmm. Real question yeah. for, for you before you go ahead. And this might be, I like how you, you told me about how pre-planning and going there mm -hmm. prior to, before even the event started, mm -hmm. having the lay of the land, kind of understanding it. I think that's a really good thing to, to mm -hmm. do. My question for you is, I know when it comes to, even from documentaries, but also from doing live events mm -hmm. like weddings. I keep going back to weddings, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Um, level of comfort with the talent because yeah. this is their life, right? Yeah. And they are living their life every single day like we all are to like, but we're not used to having a camera crew mm -hmm. or someone asking them questions every five minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how did you, how was, how did you deal with Scott to know when to get what you needed to get and when not to, and when to fall back, so to speak. Yeah. When did you start experiencing that or when did you start taking notes to that or mm. understanding that? that? That is a great question because that is something that I feel like I undervalued and I was kind of oblivious going into this is, is the importance of really developing the relationship with that person who's in the spotlight, your talent or I don't know, whatever you want to call them. Because they're the ones giving you access. Yeah. And so I think for me, I kind of went into it a little naive, like, oh, they're just going to do whatever I tell them to do, you know? <laughs> like they're actors, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. <laughs> and um, it became very clear to me, I would say, when we went up to shoot in April, all his backstory, I, th I you know, I had talked with Scott on the phone, you know, and I, I knew him, but obviously I'd never met him. And I just thought, oh, he's a triathlete, like, he's just going to be run and gun all day long, right? We're just going to be pulling 12-hour days, like, mm -hmm. that was my assumption, right? Mm -hmm. And it became very clear that Scott, like, he obviously 
you know, was committed to the documentary, but he wanted to have some structure and not just be running from one thing to the next thing to the next thing for the four days that we did there. Because I would imagine, you know, telling your life story and everything else is very draining, right? So that was a learning process for me of understanding, like, when to be like, I really need this. And there was a time when, when I did have to do that. Like, I really want this shot at this particular location. And then there was times where I just had to be like, cause I think the thing with Scott that's really good is like, he's very good with boundaries. And like, if he doesn't feel comfortable or is too tired, he's not afraid to like tell you how he feels. And that's a good thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's definitely times where I felt like I was like pushing. This was throughout the whole documentary experience. There was times where I felt like I had this expectation you know, creatively of like, we're gonna do this and this and this and this, and that wasn't always realistic with like what Scott could do or, you know, was up for. Right. And he was very, you know, very open to letting us into some, you know, really vulnerable, mm -hmm. vulnerable aspects of his life. But I think there was also things where we had to like meet in the middle kind yeah. of. And that was, I think it just goes back to like learning how to read people. And I think, you know, sometimes that thing. comes more naturally to some people than yeah. others. And I think especially as a creative, like we are good at reading people, but I think we also just get in the zone where it's like, no, I need to get this. And you're so honed in like creatively that it's hard to read or understand that, that yeah. social atmosphere. And yeah. that's, that's hard. You it know? is definitely hard. And I think that, I think especially when you do a documentary or even a wedding, you have to understand when you walk into that bride's room, there's so much going on, going on. <laughs> you don't have, you have no clue. Yeah. You don't know all the guests she's invited, the ones yeah. that turned her down, the people, the family members that might yeah. have tension and drama. Yeah. You are oblivious to all, oh, all yeah. you think is like, 100%. I need to get this shot and you get that shot and you get that. Yeah. But the thing is to get the, and I, and I see it may be, I do see when I'm shooting weddings, I do see them as my, you know, they are my clients, but yeah. I see them as actors. Yeah. But to get the best performance out of them, I need them to be them. Yeah. I don't need them to be anyone else. Yeah. And to let them be them is to be relaxed. Yeah. And in a good mood and not like yes. in a bad mood. Yeah. So <laughs> I know I got, yeah. I know, I know I, I went yeah. off a little bit, but I think that's a very important thing to that's touch on. That's a very important skill set. Especially when filming a documentary or any type of story. Yeah. Yeah. You know, is to know when, when to intervene and when not to intervene. Yeah, and I think that that's just something that comes th with experience. Correct. You know, and I like, I felt like I learned so much on this documentary that I was kind of like oblivious to when I it's first. It's good. You learn from doing. Yeah. You know, and you learn from growth. And I think, I think you, it sounds like you learned a couple things. Obviously, like the pre-planning pre things. Yeah. You know, um, obviously getting to know your talents. Yes, you I know? think that it's like that was one thing I was going to say that I feel like is undervalued is developing a really good relationship with your whoever you're and, and really getting to know them and Correct. how they work is mm -hmm. invaluable Correct. in a documentary. Absolutely. And that could go that could be a bride too. Right. You know, getting to know your bride, get, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in a wedding. Sort yeah, of situation. I, I think so. Absolutely. A hundred percent. But back to twenty. 21 right yes. so everything is going well scott's giving you access you're getting the shots you need to get um tell me what's happening uh leading up to the the beach launch so everything is kind of going you're up to that point tell me bring me there what's going on yeah it was kind of there it was a twofold situation like when we got to Bimini, there was some logistical issues that, like, there was a specific boat that was going to come over and, and be the one that we go back on, and that boat couldn't come over, so we ended up having to shift some things around logistically in got terms it. of what boat we were going to be on, and the, the production crew was going to be on one boat, and they were going to be split on another, and we were going to dinghy back and forth. Like, it was a very complex logistical situation that we kind of had to be flexible to when we sure. first got to Bimini mm -hmm. um, for the crossing. And, and so we were ready to, to be flexible with that, but the night before, the night of the crossing, 
um, the weather just took a change, oh, no. a change for the worse. Yeah. And there was a really strong east wind, and you know, Travis kind of said to me, like, I don't know, like, Travis is a very positive person, so he wasn't like, I don't think they're going to make it, but he was like, I don't know that everyone is in the crossing going to be able to finish this race. Like, we just don't know what the he weather's going to do. He said that to you prior to the launch. Prior to the launch. He said something like the weather is not looking great. Like, I don't know. So if, when he uh, told you that, knowing you've got everything already in the back, because up until this point, everything is going according to your, to, to, to your bullet points and your quote unquote, what your, doc, what your ideal documentary wanted to look like. What was your thought when Travis came to you and said that to you? What, what was your initial thought? He seemed confident that like Scott and, and his team could do it, but mm -hmm. it was more framed in the sense of like, I don't know if the, the amateur paddlers are going to be able to make it across. So that's kind of how he framed it to me. So I thought, okay, well, we're still good. Got it. We've still got no a alarm. plan. Right. You know, everything's cool. Like, we're just going to go for it, you know? Mm -hmm. So everyone launched off the beach, and I was on the main boat. Mm -hmm. And then there was a little boat that they were, all the paddlers were on. Mm -hmm. And without kind of going into too much detail. Because we don't want to give away the movie. <laughs> well, yeah. There was some, yeah. <laughs> there was some logistical failures that just caused the whole thing to unravel. Like nothing went according to plan or how it was to go communication wise. We get out there, the seas are like six to eight feet. Well, yeah, five to, anywhere from four to five to six to eight feet. Right. I'm getting seasick, oh, people God. are getting seasick. Like it's just, yeah. it was awful. So they had to, basically things did not go to plan. I mean, I can, I can tell you this cause it's okay, like, got it's, it. They got 13 miles in and couldn't do it, right? Yeah. And so that was a huge reality. That is Mother moment. Nature rewriting the script right there. That's what that is, right? <laughs> That's exactly what that and is. And we just all got to Fort Lauderdale and we're like, well, what do we do? And, and yeah, it was just a total bust, you know? Yeah. And so after that, we were trying to figure out like, what do we do, mm. you know? And I was just, it never entered into my mind that like there was an option of them not being able to make it. Like yeah, that never, never. <laughs> figured into my equation. <laughs> it's like, like, that wasn't in the script. That was not supposed to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. So oh, man. it was a real pivot point in the documentary. And I was really discouraged. Like, were, Why were you discouraged? Were you discouraged? Tell me exactly. Was it because of, was it, was, it, was it part of what the situation with the weather? Was it Scott's performance? Was it, was it his ability that he wasn't able to finish? Was it yourself that, you know, you couldn't tell this perfect story? What was it exactly? And be honest, I'm just curious. What was it that you, why did you feel that way? Well, I mean, I think the whole story is like, for me, it was like Scott's, his whole story is culminating in him being a double lung transplant and then going and doing this crazy event, right? Mm -hmm. And that was like the, the center point of the story is he does this, the crossing. I mean, that's who's right. paying for the film. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, very yeah. important. Like, yeah. and for him, for it to just go south so quickly was like, I was just like, this isn't happening. Like that felt surreal, you know? Cause I was like, what are we going to do? Yeah. It was just... Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, the title Double or Nothing, did you have it in 2021? Yes. Pro like, so, but it, it meant something, it meant something different then than it did meaning after this year of 2022, yes. correct? Yeah. Yeah. It just meant, you know, it was, it meant like Double or Nothing means Obviously, it's a play on the fact that Scott has a double lung transplant, but it means like giving your all, kind of double yeah. or nothing, yeah. you know, and that kind of has character characterized Scott's life. So that's what it meant back then. And I feel like viewers will have to kind of really understand what it means yeah. after they watch the film. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just like, you know, and that's the thing when you're dealing with unscripted things, unscripted things will happen. 
right? And you yeah. just got to be, I think, obviously be patient and, 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 and whatever happens, happens yeah. and roll with it because that is the story, right? Yeah. So, so after you got back to Florida, obviously you felt defeated after the 2021 experience. Yeah, majorly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was it that kind of felt like, you know what? I need to dust this off and I need, what, what, why did it not end there? You know, what, what made you say, you know what, this is not done. I'm not finished. What, what got you back on your game? Well, I think me and Travis just talked it over and, and Scott wanted to maybe give it another try. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of were like, well, we could finish it here. Right. And, mm -hmm. and tell this story of how, you know, sometimes you you make it and sometimes you don't and and that's a lot like life you know life is not always a picture perfect movie where you make it all the time and yeah. that's a powerful story too yeah for sure so we had a choice of whether you know we wanted to end it there or we wanted to give it some more time and see if scott wanted to try it again mm. and so i think we kind of worked through through that process and scott wanted to try it again and so you and Travis were already cool with the idea. It was just, you were just waiting to hear, is, Tra is, is Scott on board kind of thing, we right? We were cool with what, which idea? Of if, if Scott wants to continue on with it, you guys were both like, we need to finish this. I think Travis was like, Travis is a visionary, and so yeah. he was like, well, wouldn't it be cool if he comes back next year? Like, oh. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm not going to leave this project half done. So yeah. like if, if it takes us another year, like, so you we'll, were do, on board we'll do if, whatever we have to do. Right. You know? so, but you were, at that point, you were just kind of waiting to see what Scott. Yeah, it was just kind of a, a conversation for a couple of months. And then it kind of became clear, I would say, last fall. That's great. Now, everyone's on board for 2022. This Hopefully, this is going to be the time that mm -hmm. everything goes according to script, right? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so now you're kind of coming to this um, part of filming this documentary where you're like, you know what? You have the experience of going there already, so you kind of know the lay of the land. Mm -hmm. You now have a great crew and a great team behind you that you've delegated. Mm -hmm. These things that you've learned from the last few years... So everything's kind of looking really kind of good on paper as far as your stress level and where mm -hmm. things are at. Plus you have a lot of things already in the can mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of just kind of working on this particular section of the, yeah. of the story and then kind of going Finishing into the final it. act of the story, right? So tell me, did it go perfect? What happened when you, get it, when you got over to, tw um, to back to Bimini in 2022? Well, I think just to digress really quickly, one of the things like, you know, I think in 2021, at first I was like, this is a real, f I saw it as a failure. And, and the cool thing was it ended up being a real blessing because we had, what we ended up doing is Scott decided to come back and we ended up doing a Kickstarter campaign, which was another huge learning curve, a successful, we raised like over our goal of $27,000. Wow. And... <laughs> We got a couple corporate sponsors on board as well to fund that second part of the journey. And, you know, I got basically a whole year to edit mm. the film, which when you're producing, you know, a 30 minute film and you're just like one person, you know, that was just invaluable having yeah, that I time. So I worked on basically up, up to the second crossing on a year yeah so I guess what I want to say is like like being flexible and even like when you see when you feel like things are a disappointment or, or a, a failure sometimes they're actually really a blessing when when you look back and have a little bit of time to right. like figure out what you're gonna do and and what you, you've learned from it well congratulations on the Kickstarter that's well, not thank easy you. yeah it was a huge learning experience and that was really cool too so yeah, so so everyone came back on board for 2022, and then we we ended up having a, a bigger production team for 2022 as well. You came on board, and and um, Colin came on board, and that was just like the real 
like it felt like the dream team, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, we had a great, great team of paddlers and crew, you know, because your crew is really important in the crossing. And, yeah, so we, we came back into the crossing. You know, I knew exactly what I wanted to shoot. Right. So we didn't really shoot, like, a ton of stuff. We just shot a few things. I remember that. And, um, and then we just full steam launched into the crossing 2022. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think that was one of the cool things about working with you in 2022 is that I felt, I didn't, obviously, I, I only did the beach landing in 2021, so I got to see you not at your best on that particular day because you were just, I was exhausted. I know your documentary. I you're was still probably still seasick. seasick. I was yeah, so you were just done. Like, you're just like you were like, "Hi, Mike. Whatever. Film yeah. film people with cowbells. Whatever <laughs> they're doing." Yeah, I'm like, okay, I, 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 I you know, but I, I understand. I can understand where that comes from because you had a long night and and it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. So I'm, I'm doing my best here, getting the best B-roll I possibly can. I'm waiting for him to come on shore and then I get messages he's not there and he's in Fort Lauderdale. I'm like, what's, I, you know, whatever. It was in the past, but 20, I felt like when I worked with you in 2022, this past, this past one, when we, I, I felt like you, there was, a, there was a piece about you where you didn't feel Stress. I never felt like you felt stressed. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like people gave you the access that you needed, mm -hmm. and which was really good. And you knew exactly what questions you wanted to ask. You knew what events you wanted, what events you didn't want. Mm -hmm. You knew, you knew what you wanted Taco or Colin to do, mm -hmm. uh, which was the drone pilot. And you knew what you wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, it just felt like a good. You know, it didn't feel like it was like, boom, boom, boom. We need to get this person, we need to get this person, we need to get You just knew exactly what to get. Mm -hmm. And the boating situation or the, the, the chartering back over, mm -hmm. um, that experience all worked very smoothly. Mm -hmm. That can always be hard, right? Mm -hmm. Transitioning, when you have crewmen, when you have crew still on the shore mm -hmm. filming the paddle boards as they go into the water, then you have another person on a boat somewhere in the middle of the water yeah. waiting for them to meet up. How do you, it's dark out. No one yeah. knows where the heck everyone is. I mean, I think as much as there were quote unquote failures previous years, those were just experiences to kind of get you to where you were mm -hmm. for this year. So I felt being a part of it, that it went as seamless as possible. Yeah. When you're moving people from one place to another. Yeah, I think that was one of my big goals is like, I think like when you're leading a team, like I just wanted everyone to feel like they were supported and what they and they had what they need to do their job well. That was kind of what I felt like was part of my responsibility as the director. And so and what I hope was felt because Bimini is not the US and it gets very chaotic very quickly and communication falls apart and so I knew that from my experience from 2021 mm -hmm. and so my whole goal and I think it goes back to pre-production me and Travis have had a standing production meeting every Tuesday for the past year over a year oh wow two years probably going on a year and a half wow and it goes back to pre-production and I cannot overestimate the necessity for dialing in your communication when you do an event like this mm. because you have to go overboard on your communication because things are so chaotic and there's so many people involved. You have to go and connect mm. all those dots to all the people. Even though you think the dots may not need to be connected, it right. just helps to go and connect the dots. Yeah. And so that was something that I learned and took away from 2021 and I really tried to do in 2022 so that everyone could really, really do their job well and there wasn't like communication breakdowns that were like making people irritated and everything else. Right. 
Um, Communication is key, right? Yeah, and I think that that can be anything with you know that can that can work on a, a level with weddings. You For know, sure. you or need to have event. a good relationship with. You need to be able to work with your photographer, right? You need to be able to communicate with the DJ, with the wedding planner. Correct. You know. Um, Correct. So. Yeah, it's just having good communication and, yeah. and doing your due diligence. Like, like for example, with weddings, I've had issues with working with photographers, right? Sometimes it can be like a, <laughs> you know. So I try to, like, get out ahead of it and, like, just DM them on Instagram and yeah. be like, hey, I'm going to be working with you this weekend. Correct. Like, just nice to meet you. Yeah, like, yeah. just little things like that right. can go really far, for I sure. feel like. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, that's cool that you were able to take that away from the previous year. So the, the 2022 experience was a lot, a lot more easier, uh, especially working with a lot more people. I think the crew was a little bit bigger that this yeah. year too as well. Because I was able to edit for a year and have that time to let it breathe, uh, it really, really helped a lot. You know, because trying to edit a 30 or 40 minute documentary is a colossal. Yeah undertaking and there was many moments of like I don't think I can do this like what if I need to just like give it to someone else I mean I felt that way in the beginning what made you want to do it all by yourself is that an ego thing too or is that no I no I'm sorry for calling you yeah, out yeah, yeah. I'm just curious because <laughs> we talked about it earlier about yeah. wearing and doing everything what made you said I need to edit this what 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 oh. I think originally it was not going to be quite as big okay. as, as it was. I think it was maybe going to be like 10 to 15 minute documentary oh, or 20 minute documentary. We didn't even really know, honestly. Got it. You know, Travis wanted to do Scott's story justice, but I think it was supposed to be a little bit smaller project. I and see. it was like, as it grew and grew and grew, it just kind of grew bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Got it. And then obviously when we kind of had the turn of events, we were like, okay, this is yeah. going to be a bigger project. So it wasn't up until the Kickstarter it, or up until that green light to go into 2022, it still was going to be just a 15 minute. I feel like we were maybe shooting a little more for that time range, potentially. Got it. We didn't really know yet. Got it. And so it was never really an option, I think, budget wise or just it was never on the table that someone else was going to edit it and I didn't I just never felt like that was like on the table okay, you know got it it was like and it just didn't make sense because it was like I had agreed to take on this project you know and right. and then like if I was to hand it off to someone else like it wouldn't they wouldn't know if they weren't involved like it just it was just never an option I felt like in my head or on so the table. even if so you never thought I could potentially hand this off to someone. If there, if there was a budget for it, would you have done that? <laughs> uh, Be honest. I think there was moments in the beginning where that crossed my mind. I was, I think it was out of fear of like, I don't think I can do this. Like, what were those What doubts? if I can't, it was more of these thoughts of like, what if I can't do this? What if I fail? And I have all this pressure riding on me. Like, what if I just can't do this? And I t have to tell Travis and he's like, I just leave him with like an unfinished documentary. <laughs> so is that what kept you up at night is literally like, I need to finish this. I need to finish this. Was, do you work good under pressure? It sounds like that's, you, stri you, you thrive on that, right? No? Um, well, I felt like the good thing about having a year is that I didn't feel like I was up against the gun. Right, that's, and that's I think actually the time having a year is one of the main things, the reasons I did was able to do it because right. I was able to you know, when I got overwhelmed, I would step away and give it room to breathe and then come back into it. And I didn't feel like it exhausted me because I So you I didn't was, have a fixed schedule of, yeah. do you just, whenever you felt it? Whenever I could, my schedule allowed it. Got it. You know, I, I would have breaks in my schedule and I would, I just edited it like a little at a time. My question is that you did have a script or some sort of storyboard. That went out the window, obviously. Not really. No, no, it didn't. I felt like the documentary is still still what I thought it would be. It's just not up through the first cross, like from the first crossing Okay, on. got it. So I still was like, I'm going to just do this as if, I just edited it as if, like nothing really changed, I felt like. Okay. Um, I just edited it 
from as start I would to finish have. as far as events went and just told it how it was. Yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the rest hasn't been shot and filmed yet, and so therefore you're just waiting for that to happen. Correct. Now, knowing the outcome of what happened in 2021, were you okay with you editing this and thinking to yourself, and this is with a mindset of before 2022, what if we go at it with 22 and it, it still doesn't happen? Does it, did that, did you, were you, would you at that, did you even think of like, I'll, what the hell? Or what, what was your thought process? You know, then? it's weird, honestly. I didn't, you would have thought I'd learned from the first crossing. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, no, he's going to do it. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Like, he has to do it. Yeah. Like, that's not an option. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Oh man, it's funny. Well, I think I think you've learned, but from the situations that you've been through. Yeah, I uh, mean, we could go into it if you want. I don't want to go into it. I, I just okay. I just wanted to I just wanted to know what you were thinking if a situation like that were to happen, like you know. No, well, it, it, you, I but was, in your mind, you're like, it's gotta it's gotta just, be this way. I just was like. Well, if it didn't happen last year, then that means it's going to happen this year. Right. Like it has, I just, it was, I know. think, I think we're, we get so fixed of it, our own story that it, yeah. these are real, these are real freaking people. Yeah. This, they're, they're yeah. the ones putting their body on the line, yeah. literally paddling. Yeah. We're on a boat. If we get seasick, that's the worst of it. Right. Yeah. So I think, yeah. You know, I think, I think you just got to learn as a filmmaker is just be respectful of people you're filming, especially if they're not actors. Yeah. They're not, this is not their job. You know yeah. what I mean? They're not being paid to perform a particular way, to recite a particular line. Yeah. These are real people. Yeah. And I think once we start understanding that, I think you're going to get the best performances mm -hmm. out of your quote unquote actors mm -hmm. because you're letting them, you're giving them space mm -hmm. and you're letting them be themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. when I get the best mm -hmm. wedding films or I get the best experiences that I mm -hmm. capture are is when you, when you give them that space, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I, I find that, but it's always, I always tell my other shooters, you have to be in the moment, but anticipate the next moment. Yeah. Especially when it comes to For anything, sure. event or documentary, you have to just be honed in on what's happening, but also be aware of what's going on around you, mm -hmm. because that will definitely help you getting what you need on the fly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, this has been really, really good. I think I've learned a lot from just talking to you well, and just kind of you. understanding of uh, your growth as a as yeah. a documentary filmmaker slash event filmmaker mm -hmm. and I, I i'm looking forward to seeing what you put together i can't wait to see the footage and seeing what you put together i have a lot of questions again about post-production but i think we'll save that for another time yeah you know what i mean but yeah. uh, i definitely do appreciate your time yeah and, thank uh, you can you tell people a little bit more about the documentary if you want to just yeah 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 so the documentary it's called double or nothing mm -hmm. and it's in post-production right now mm -hmm. And we're going to set, to set to release it probably early next year. We're not quite sure yet. It, it's in the f more final stages of post-production. So um, it's going to be, you know, around a 40-minute minute documentary. Not 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. 40-minute, <laughs> um, basically, adventure film documentary. And... Um, we're going to premiere it probably here locally in West Palm. So all those details will, you know, be coming out. I'd say if people want to follow along on the journey, um, you can follow me on Instagram, MGW Pro, or um, Piper's Angels and The Crossing for Cystic Fibrosis. They also, that's honestly, they'll be posting, you know, mm -hmm. more updates and I will kind of be resharing. And stuff, yeah, that's so. fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing some of those updates. I have one more question for you though. Yeah. Um, I know as a filmmaker, content creator, um, filmmaker, um, creative control is always a big thing, you mm -hmm. know, especially as like, as far as telling the story goes. Mm -hmm. um, this project, it seems like 
it, 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 it is a collaboration between the Crossing, mm -hmm. Piper's Angels, Travis, mm -hmm. Scott to a mm -hmm. certain degree. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like as far as creative control um, for you? Uh, was it what you thought it was going to be or did it, was it something different? Uh, I'm just trying to throw that at you, just get an honest, idea. I honestly feel tremendously grateful to Travis, you know, and the team at, at Piper's Angels Foundation because Travis, has given me, has put a, a lot of trust and like, I guess saw something in me and I'm just really grateful. He really has given me like a lot of creative control and really trusted me tremendously, which I think is a big thing as a creative. You don't want to be like micromanaged, you know? And I think he has just been so amazing at that, that I've just felt really humbled and grateful that he, you know, obviously he's been involved, but he's also given me a lot of like trust and, mm -hmm. and control creatively and really hasn't, you know, he's going to be seeing the, the draft, you know, and he's like inviting all this these. Is, is this these, his first time seeing it even yes, from the first? Yes. So he, he hasn't, hasn't seen, seen anything, anything from 2021? or 22 yet at all. No yeah. one has seen anything, like so, not even my family. Like, <laughs> that's why, when you told me that, I was like, that's just, you need to, I, I, I would go crazy just sitting on something like that. I just could not do that. I don't know how you did that. That's too much pressure to, I yeah, can't. Yeah, I just, I don't know. So I guess to answer your question, yeah, I'm sorry, I, yeah, I yeah. felt like I've had a lot of creative control, and I've really been humbled and, and grateful for that. Right. Um, that Travis has given given That's that fantastic. to me because you don't always get that. You do at not. All, you do not. You, so I'm I really mean, grateful. you ask any director in Hollywood or anyone, they're like, you know. Yeah. Or or anyone really, you know, yeah. for that matter, you know. Yeah. I mean, usually the people that control the the piggy bank, so to speak are the ones that usually uh, dictate exactly how the yeah. story is going to go or what's going to be or, or micromanage, like you say. And yeah. sometimes as a creative, that can be like, that, it feels like it's killing your soul, you know what I yeah. mean? But yeah. that sounds really cool that was, you were able to have yeah. an opportunity to tell a story like this and have full range and access of whatever you needed to help tell that story. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the... That's, that's the perfect world right there, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it just goes back to like finding the right people that you really like gel with and like you get them and they really get you. Right. I think working with the right people, if anything in this industry, like it's taught me that is like it's all about working with the right people that yeah. you can really like yeah. connect with. So. One more last question. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you see this all going? I mean, obviously you have this showing to Travis, you're going to do a little test runs showing exactly of where this documentary is and then release it to the world. Um, what's the next, where do you see ultimately where this goes? And then for yourself, what do you see yourself doing from there on? Yeah, that's a great question. I think Trav both Travis and I have really high expectations for this film and we're still kind of like, that's kind of the, mar the marketing phase is what we're in right now is, and I feel like I can't, talk so much like I could I could talk to you about it off camera right, but I don't right, want right. to talk about it on camera but I would say you know we want to see this documentary like you know having the widest audience that it possibly could mm -hmm. and and going as far as it possibly could so we're kind of in that marketing phase of, of figuring out what a Got marketing it. plan looks like for the film for me you know honestly I really do love story driven content in the outdoors and I like I my biggest inspirations for this film have been films like Free Solo mm -hmm. and Un Bethany Hamilton's Unstoppable and like The Alpinist was another film. These like really epic adventure documentaries. Yeah. And I think that's like like my big passion is these, these the in exploring the intersection of these really amazing human stories of, of real life characters and putting them in like a really vast 
outdoor environment, you know? Sure. That, that's like Overcoming the odds passion. kind of things, like those, those types of documentaries for sure. and stories. So, yeah. yeah. Really. And well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it with me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> yeah, thank you awesome. so much. I learned so much from my conversation and chat, just chatting with uh, Michaela, you know, a, a fellow event filmmaker that decided to take her event, event filmmaking skills and kind of one up, like I mentioned earlier, to go into the documentary space. Um, you know, hearing from her, hearing about her struggles, uh, everything from dealing with, you know, how do you deal with getting the right content out of your actor? How do you have the patience to deal with that? How do you uh, delegate and uh, you know make sure you put the right people in charge of different things? All those things struck a chord with me and I truly can relate and understand where she's coming from. So with that said, if you like content like this, I'm planning on rolling out more interviews with creatives uh, that are in the creative space. Like I said, not just event filmmaking or documentary filmmaking, uh, but all types of creatives where they could sit down and talk about their process. Um, I think we all have something to learn from everyone's uh, background as far as an art, as a creative, and uh, that's what this is all about. So uh, continue to like and share this video, and stay tuned for more content and videos like this. Take care, and keep creating, by the way. <laughs>